One, one of the uh, things with the China market is um, because a lot of laws are written in relatively vague terms and open to interpretation, it's very rare that a company operates successfully in China for a long period of time without coming up against um, some aspect of the, of the legal system. Um, you know, perhaps you breach a minor regulation here or, or, or a minor regulation there. Uh, it's almost impossible to avoid. Um, so we recommend to our clients that they have a very proactive approach in terms of dealing with the Chinese government. They need to be getting out and getting to know their local um, representatives from different government departments they deal with, perhaps the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Industry and, uh, and, and Commerce, um, so that they have a relationship in place with those people uh, so that once something does go wrong, they've got someone to, to go to who they already have a relationship with. If you leave it to the point where um, something goes wrong and you haven't got a relationship, then that's too late. It's too late to then start trying to build a relationship and, and trying to minimise the, the problems. In, 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 a, in a Western market, um, you can be much, more, uh, much less proactive in terms of government relations. It, it's okay just to wait until something goes wrong and then to go and talk to the, the government representative and start sorting things out. And uh, in, a, in a lot of Western countries, you know, we've been used to just exporting to China. So we've been kissing our goods goodbye at the wharf virtually and, uh, and not thinking about them. But as China grows as a, as a consumer market, uh, companies need to be moving in, setting up offices and managing their relationships with the government so that if there is a product recall or is there, if there is a, a quality problem, they have someone in country who can deal with the government and has that relationship with the government to, to smooth things out and get the problem sorted out quickly and efficiently. When you're just exporting to China, um, you're operating in your own um, cultural environments and with, under your own laws and, uh, and regulations. When you start uh, growing a business in China, the complexity fa uh, level rises uh, you know, exponentially uh, because now you're operating in, in the Chinese language environment, um, you're now operating under Chinese law, you're following Chinese policy and, and where is that trending. Um, you're also having to uh, understand who, who's who in the Chinese market. Uh, and uh, you know, the complexity level is, is significantly greater. Um, and you're also having to understand not just what the rules and regulations are, but what are the, what are the loopholes, what are the, the loldong as the, as the Chinese say, what are the gaps in the market or what's the actual practice um, that people are, that's accepted by the government. Uh, it may, may be different from what the legal, the legal definition is. There may be a, another level that's accepted local practice, how much tax you might pay per month or, or, or how you uh, import goods uh, may be a little bit different from what's uh, set in the law. When a company expands its business into China and starts having a local presence, it's really important that they start um, learning how to operate almost like a Chinese company operates. Perhaps you still have some of your, your same home country ethics and standards, but there's uh, uh, a meeting of the, uh, of the standards, I guess, or a meeting of the practices where you need to be localising to a certain extent uh, just to be competitive with, with Chinese, uh, you know, with large Chinese uh, competitors.